Hello everybody, welcome to the official replay cast of the Group C first round match between Jimmy Fantastic and his Dark Elves and Truk and his Undead. Truk won the toss and chose to receive and uh, while that was a good choice, the kickoff <laughs> was an officious ref on his ghoul with the ball in the end zone. So, <laughs> so he didn't have two ghouls back, right? He didn't have two ghouls back. He only had... Did he only have three ghouls? Yeah, well, first of all, I don't like that he only has three ghouls. Should have four ghouls, right? He only had three ghouls. And he only had one ghoul back. And, uh, so, yep, yeah, there we go. One nil Dark Elves. You'd think so. You'd certainly think so. <laughs> Don't say it's over. <laughs> Even this, right? This should have been a blitz to get the white back, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, move the ghouls back instantly. This should have been a blitz, get him back. Because there wasn't a blitz made, was there? So yeah, um, obviously Jimmy Fantastic at this point in time, I bet was really happy that he was getting loads of pressure and was uh, definitely going to win. Probably should have done that stand up and these moves before the blitz, but never mind. Maybe didn't need that witch back as a safety, right? But it couldn't really get anywhere good, was the problem. I just couldn't get very far, that was a problem. And uh, I figured there was enough that I'm gonna score, get the ball and score anyway. I mean, you know, so the, the reason being, the reason for this was, like, where was it, here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It stands there, which isn't doing a whole lot. I don't think I need it. Maybe I did need it. But um, these guys, obviously, I could have touched him, I guess. I could have touched him. Um, which would have done the same thing as what happens if he picks it up and lobs it to him and runs away. So the witch elf stops that, right? So it does stop. His very few, like, at this point in time, I'm so ridiculously confident that I'm definitely going to end the half 1-0. I just want to reduce what tiny little chance he had of getting the ball to him and, uh, and getting away. But yeah, as, you know, this witch elf could have come up there, to be fair. Safe moves first, love to see it. And this is just like an absolute disaster for him, isn't it? Absolute disaster. Yeah. 
But yeah, that's that's true. That this if this witch had come up here first turn, it could have been like here or something this turn. Didn't bother basing him. Could have based him obviously, but thought there's no real need to. But again, if the witch had been up there previous, then the witch could have been there, and that guy could have been based. I definitely don't want a 4 plus cage dive. 4 plus cage dive here is ridiculous. Like, I just need to... Like, he's he's lost, right? He's lost. There's there's no way I'm dreaming of doing any dodges to sack the ball here. I'm just waiting to win. And there you go, he fails a rush. And, uh, happy days. So, I'll tell you what happened here. I'll tell you what happened. Looking at this. This could have moved, right? This could have moved here. And I don't know why I didn't. I don't know why I didn't move him. And also this guy could have moved. But this is the big one. This one had to move here. Or here, I guess. So maybe I'm thinking what will happen after I scatter the ball, to be fair. To be fair. So I'm just hitting all the ghouls. Make sure his responses are lacking, right? I'm not too bothered about the ball again. I'm not too bothered about going for the ball here. I'm just thinking, control all the ghouls. Victory is inevitable, <laughs> right? So, yeah, so what I'm doing here, right? I'm not gonna pick up the ball. When I do this blitz, I'm not picking up the ball, right? I'm just gonna scatter it and power him and then, and then see what I do with the, you know, whether I make this block, where this guy comes across, where this guy goes, where this guy goes. Now I could have done safe moves, right? I could have gone three, one, two, three, four, five, six. I could have put somebody there. He could have tagged the mummy. This guy could have come around to the center. I could have done all these safe moves, but I just want to see what happens with Blitz, because I'm definitely not going to do any dice rolls with the Witch Elf afterwards, right? I get the pow. And then the Witch Elf catches the ball, so now I have to dodge the Witch, right? Now I just literally have to dodge her because she's caught the ball. And then Snake. So... Because <laughs> I, I can't just like, can't just instantly get the ball carrier smashed. But I guess I could have done... But it, again, it's a 1 in 36, right? Um, but yeah, so... I, I feel like I was incredibly lucky that I had to then dodge with her. Because I was kind of fine with her getting punched. Um, and then, you know, like, let's say the ball goes here, then this guy goes and picks it up. And then this guy comes around and maybe he rushes to base him, and then this guy goes there. If the ball goes to here, then this guy goes for the pickup. This one bases the mummy. This one comes around. So there were all sorts of things that I think, I want to see what happens with the ball. I definitely won't pick up with the witch elf, so this won't fail. And then, of course, I had a 1 in 36 afterwards, and then fail the 1 in 36. But the 1 in 36 was not planned. If that was the... If I had foreseen the eventuality of catching the ball, maybe this guy would have come down there at least or something. Um, if it's not a spoiler... Course, uh, <laughs> what the hell, Roy Rimbo? What do you mean? <laughs> what are you on about? I don't know if somebody made a spoiler. But obviously, there's no spoilers. This is the, re this is the bloody re replay, guys. I'm not going to give any spoilers away, am I? Or allow any spoilers. What a strange thing. Um, right. So yeah, so that that was that was I thought that was very unfortunate, but maybe I could have maybe I could have planned some things. But again, I wanted to react wherever it went. Uh, maybe I could have still held on to it. Honestly, it's still on a blodger, but you're just instantly getting two dice, right? But again, I'm still in a dominant position even after he powers it. So again, I could have I could have just moved players around and stuff to cover it. I could have just left it in contact, but. But, yeah, I mean, the, the Wood Elf dodge is better than getting smashed by a mummy, right? Like, a mummy smashing you is 30% with a reroll. So you're about 50-odd you're about percent to get to get powered, and then you hit with Mighty Blow. So it's definitely better to make the dodge in terms of keeping the ball, but it meant that I was missing three players or four players in support. So, yeah, pretty unlucky that I... But then it was bad that I didn't foresee the eventuality, to be fair. Like, maybe this guy should have at least come down to base it. Yeah, maybe that one should have at least come down to base it. 
where the ball is going to go to. But I mean, he's still in, obviously, heaps of trouble here. Also, I could have made that block first, but I wanted to keep rerolls open in case things happened. So that, that block. So again, all the safe moves that I didn't do first. <sighs> okay. So here, there is like a kind of a play of dodging around and coming all the way around and like uphilling into a 1D to get 2D on the ball. But again, very confident, plenty of time. Let's just uh, let's just wait. Get back in front of him. Still amazingly confident that I'm going to get the ball and everything's going to be all right. <laughs> Power another goo. So we've got a net, a net around the ball. Uh, there's a, there was an argument this one could have gone the other way, right, to, to stop the ghouls reconnecting here. Maybe there. There or there. Don't roll snakes. Oh, I should have written on my computer. So, you know, he gets a little bit forward, but that's all he can do, right? He can't realistically potato because I brought these guys back in front of him. So I stopped the potato, which is how he can survive this. And, you know, these four players were controlled by two in the end. So yeah, just get the witch in front, make sure no potato is happening. Pretty unlucky. So at this point I think I have to I have to base the mummy. So <laughs> So I go for this and one in thirty-six. Um and didn't get to try and dodge her around either. I I mean, this guy could have based the mummy, but I wanted... So this is the thing. Okay, here we go. I actually wanted this in this spot, right? And then if the... The blitzer was to base the mummy. And then with this guy here, he can't get assists on and stuff, right? And he can't... He could blitz this, but then he couldn't go anywhere. Because this guy was stopping that. So I wanted somebody in this square, which the blitzer couldn't reach. So the next job was the blitzer bases the mummy, so that he can't blitz with a mummy. And then this witch had come around, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, like there, maybe rush, and then just tighten everything up so that, you know, there would have been a screen there and everything. Um, you know, try some of the two pluses out, whatever. But um, instead, one in 36. And all of a sudden, he gets to reconnect now, because now all these are completely uncontrolled, aren't they? So he gets to go back into a into a defensive shape and now my chance to end the half 1-0 up is basically gone. A little bit disappointed. But I mean it's almost certainly a successful defense, right? Successful. Uh, being like nil-nil is technically a successful defense, isn't it? But uh, it sure feels like an opportunity missed. He also gets to do this foul as well. And a 1D pow. You know, it's well played by Trick, right? He's got the team back together and stuff. Like, he, he you know, he he was in a horrible spot. And he, you know, he was eye-caging with guard to keep everything, you know, keep, ev keep everything together. So... 
fair play from him. I looked at kind of chains here and there was nothing really that I thought was uh, good. Nice reroll, nice reroll, right, nice removal. Oh, yeah, I did go for this. This chain. And then I was going to base him with two players. And then I thought, if I base him with two players, something bad could happen. But then I didn't base him. I only based him with the first one. I thought, just keep the wrestle back and then don't concede. So I must have seen some way for him to, you know, like blitz through and get a cage. So I just thought, don't take any chances. Just, uh... Just make sure I've got the wrestler back. He can't potato. I just definitely win the half. Nil nil. Right. This is the replay. This is the official replay cast. Uh, sound or sound. So, you know, again, he keeps the he keeps the ball totally safe here of the first game. Yep. Yep. The second games start on Monday. And then there's a horrible foul, badly hurt. I mean, not horrible, like, good decision, horrible for me. Apo would have been better than a reserve this game, because I would have obviously apo a badly hurt Blitzer. So, uh, there's a nice little, nice little play here by Jimothy. Is it? No, there isn't. No, this is turn seven. <laughs> there's not a nice little play here at all. This is just, uh... This is just stand in front of things and hope for the best. Blitz the dirty player. <laughs> so he doesn't he doesn't remove somebody randomly on the last turn. Maybe I could have put the witch elf in in the front as well. Like, obviously, I know he's... Dead. I, well, I want the Witch free so I can do, like, a cage dive, right? Is the thinking, so that's why I didn't... I, but I guess I could have put the Witch in here. One day full power on me, Blodger. Unbelievable dance. It's a little bit unlucky. So we've got an H cage and a witch elf. So we have a lovely little play on the ball here. And uh, push him there into a one, oh no, into an uphill. Reroll, because I'll have to get the pushes. Get a double pow. And then I actually could have pushed him there. I, I didn't know which was better, right? I didn't know which way was better. Because um, if I push him down there, then I can push there, but there's like a lot of stuff, isn't there? Here, yes, they can catch it, but also they can fail to catch it, and it could bounce out to maybe a better place. And so I also I could have assisted with a... Like, the witch else got dodge, right? I actually had to use a... Uh, actually had to use a... Uh, Reroll on the hit, yeah, so I'm down one reroll. So I could have assisted with the line and then use the witch elf with dodge to assist. Uh, to, to make the recovery, like with dodging, but I, I I didn't hate going this way, honestly. I didn't hate it. Because it's like it's then it's going on the around the outside, isn't it? You know, if I pound and the ball goes there, then this guy can just pick it up and give it to him. So I quite liked just trying to get the best possible scatter. Um rather than maybe minimising the chance of a bad one going the other way. Don't pow him, have to re-roll it, get the bolt down. And uh, then fail the pick-up. Then I was going to jump, jump over, and then dodge and double GFI and hand, hand off. So there was, there, was a, there was a small chance, but uh, not a great chance at the end of scoring. So there you go. 
did have the ball in hand and an easy victory, but one in 36. The one, um, the one dodge with the ball. I mean, the thing to remember is don't roll snake eyes with the ball. Yes, that is the thing, Brightstone GG. Do not roll snake eyes with the ball carrier on the one dodge you make in the half. That's what I learned. So we're going to Daka here, withdrawn offence for PC, get blitzed, fantastic. So yeah, everybody's... Uh you know, maybe I should have put blodges in the front row, like the the witches maybe should have been exposed so they could dodge away. I don't know. I make a very bad mistake here. Which is, I should have dodged this guy next, right? Because he can get surfed. So this guy should have been dodged before the pickup. This guy should have dodged. And then, instead I dodge this guy. Because I'm thinking I don't want to get fouled by the dirty player. But like, if I fail another dodge, I'm going to get fouled anyway, right? And then I dodge this guy instead of this guy. So that was just sloppy and bad and rubbish. And I absolutely, just terrible mistake. I definitely should have dodged. I don't know why I didn't. I don't know why I didn't. I think I wanted I think I did this dodge first because I wanted somebody wide, like you know, to keep him keep him a bit honest, but this one definitely should have done that dodge first. That was just terrible. I guess it's because he was further away from the mummy, right? I guess that's what I was thinking. He's further away from the mummy now, but then I should have seen the surf. I just didn't see the surf. Like I didn't consider the surf, I'll be honest. And then as soon as I failed the dodge, I was like, oh he's gonna get surfed. But I didn't consider the surf. I, I I guess I was considering the mummy blitz. But he uses a reroll here, which is a bit greedy. It's a bit greedy, isn't it, putting a reroll into a surf? Like, it's just a lineman. And then gets, a, get, gets the surf anyway. There you go. <laughs> Classic. Oh, very greedy. All right, fair enough. So, you know, I really want the, like, mummies to commit somewhere so I can go the other way, don't I? So I'm going to go back another turn here, turn 10. I haven't got many players left, but you don't need too many, do you? So... God, somebody's screaming outside. So he's going to make another big gang foul, this dirty player skeleton, looking pretty good for him. sent off so that's nice isn't it now he can't foul again also his guard stayed out which is very lucky for me so just end the turn instantly so I could have waited another turn but you know dark elves are a bit slow he does have the mummies like asymmetric, right? He's got them further over to the left side. I've got this guy that I can reconnect with over here. And this guy, so I've got a bit that I can, a bit to work with over this side. And I thought, seeing as I'm slow, I can do like a, a multiple turn breakthrough and hopefully not have to dodge with the ball. Now 
was a bit rubbish, wasn't it? I probably should have blitzed him first and then I could have had like a line of three and not given away a block for free. I didn't mind tagging that mummy out for a turn. I thought that was decent. So yeah, he doesn't do a lot, does he? So I'm quite happy with that, actually. I prefer the one, I prefer keeping one far away, right, and only having one near me. I also could have one deed there, but instead I'd try for some threes and twos to get through here. Yeah, so, so, so last turn, I tagged this one so he couldn't get over and back. This turn I tag this one so we can't crash in closer, was the idea. So just like a bit of breathing room, like it was like a lot of space and then a bit of breathing room. Now I, did, I did stand this up because I thought, actually it's a bit of work for him to chain the mummy forward. Like chaining the mummy forward would have been terrible for me, right? He could have chained the mummy in and then got like right. Like if he could chain the mummy to there, which he still could have done with a blitz by the way, he could have just blitzed this guy. And then he could have chained the mummy and then got the mummy in. I'm not really happy about that, but again, it's a big commitment if he does, it takes his blitz away, I've got people behind, so I thought even if he does that, it's not that bad, um, so I thought it's okay to stand this guy up, plus actually, like, if I don't stand him up, then he fills, he backfills here and does that blitz anyway, so, yeah, I didn't, I didn't hate standing him up this turn, I didn't want to stand him up before then. He rushes there, that was a, surely a misclick. Because it, it could have directly based him. So that was surely a misclick there by uh, Truk. Doesn't cost him anything. And yeah, this is fair, right? Blitzing the furthest forward elf with tackle. Oh no, he didn't have tackle, he just rolled up half. Okay. Oh, that was the move. Well, another removal here, so... Not looking great. <laughs> but, you know. Still got nine elves. Oof. Now... What could I have done this turn? Turn 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's where the ball could go. Without dice rolls. Which doesn't look great, does it? It's to be in scoring range, I have to be touching something. So I've probably got to make a dice roll with the ball, whatever happens. And uh, I thought long and hard about this. I could have dodged this guy off and then blitzed with him. That's probably what I should have done, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Dodge with him and then blitz here. The problem is, like, the push isn't good enough, right? The push isn't good enough there, but it would clear... It, on a pow, it would clear the path through without having to dodge. So this, this, was, a, this was a tricky turn. Basically, if I if I blitz with the witch elf, it's a guaranteed knockdown, isn't it? Basically, um, so I decided to go for the witch elf blitz and stood stood him up first. And as far as things goes, standing him up first made me have to dodge with this guy. So maybe. I shouldn't have done that, and then the next dodge, the next thing that I make is the dodge of the ball carry and fails. But you know, I just had a dodge with the ball carry to there, dodge with dodge there, then he could two plus two seal the back end. 
So I've made two dodges with the ball carrier, one in each half, snake eyes both times. So you can't really do that and win <laughs> with, a, <laughs> with anyone, but much less elves. Um, you know, dodges, you know, you really want to minimize them as much as possible. Right? Like I could have, I could have dodged this guy up and then blitzed with the blitzer. But then what if I don't power him, right? So it was tough, it was very tough. And then that means he gets all these punches and stuff and it's just complete. You know, now I'm just thinking, how do I not lose, right? With two turns left, I have to come back with everything and not lose. And it's turn 15. It's turn 15. And that's what I thought. I didn't kind of didn't register that it was turn 15. I just thought, oh my God, he's taken the ball off me. I have to come back and stop him scoring. And I instantly moved my scoring threat away, which is the worst because now he has to commit to like a potato, right? Like he has to roll all the dice to try and score. So this is a good square for the witch, I thought, but you know, here or here, but I just, I thought I have to try and stop him scoring and I, I should have left the Witch Elf up as a scoring threat, honestly. Like, it's still really rough, by the way. Like, this is a one in nine dodge, because just everything was bad at that point. I guess I could have started with a Witch Elf dodge. Yeah, so... Pretty awful. I guess I should have started with a 1 in 36 dodges and not with that 1 in 9. I, I guess I was hunting for a power or something. I don't really know what, what I was thinking. Maybe a bit of tilt at that point. And then uh, he goes for the blitz and the rushes. He's got no rerolls. Make an eye cage. Five rushes, no problem. But yeah, I've lost my scoring threat, so tragic. So one into two. Full power. Actually, it didn't want it to go out right because if it goes out this direction, I just I just can just lose. So I wanted it in my tackle zones. Just pushed him up, and then try to make a bunch of rolls to make it harder for him, and then foul him so that you know, he can't do as much. God damn, I would have liked the scoring threat. <laughs> they still had two rerolls at the end of the half. So maybe, maybe you know, maybe I should have put in a reroll somewhere. I didn't really need to, though, did I? The problem was that, the, the, like, the one dice roll that I failed was, uh, was a snaked ball carrier dodge that I couldn't reroll. So... That was the end of it. And I thought Troop played well. I, I, I didn't like his three ghoul build, and... Apart from the first turn, right, his setup was quite far forward. He only had um, he only had one player back, which was the one that got knocked over with the uh, officious ref. So, like, he could have had two players back. He could have pulled more stuff back on turn one. So, apart from like three ghouls and the setup and the turn one, I thought he played very well throughout. I think this is a sneaky group of death, by the way. Um, Truk, I thought played really well there. And we've got two mission in the group who's in the final, uh, not in the final, sorry, in the semi-final of Chalice this season. And then uh, Kellathorn, I don't, I've heard the name. So, you know, I don't know, I don't know who he is, but I've, heard, I've definitely heard the name Kellathorn. So this could be, it could end that, you know, the good races with uh, Undead, obviously, and Orcs, Tumish has Orcs. Now Kellathorn has Orwell Alliance, so that should be okay, but still you never know. 
Um, <laughs> so there glorious. you go. Oh, glorious. Thanks, no, I won't give in until I'm victorious. And I will defend. I will defend. Four. A human pregnancy flower. Thank you very much, Seabros. Thanks for staying fantastic. Absolutely glorious. So, yeah, I mean, I do feel a bit hard done by. Yes, I got the amazing kick. Yes, I got the amazing officious ref. But I made two dodges with the ball carrier, one in each half, and both times it was a snake that resulted in not scoring, essentially. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was that was pretty, pretty rough. Um, and you can see on the... On the stats, it was 23 out of 27, which isn't, isn't great, right? Because there were three 1 in 36s, and I think just I think I might have just rolled a 1. Like, I might have just tried a, a dodge with a... Oh, yeah, I tried, it was the dodge off the DACA, wasn't it? It was because he got the blitz, yeah. So I, I failed 1, 2 plus, and then uh, three snakes. Three snakes isn't that bad, really. It's just it was just the timing, right? It was, and also they weren't all th some of the three plus dodgers, and I you know I didn't play perfectly by any means, um, but yeah, I wonder if I should have been more conservative in the ball sack attempt, um, you know, rather than keeping like four players to react. Maybe I should have blocked that guarder first. Maybe I should have just done all the safe moves before going for that, and then just just left one player to collect the ball. Um, but the fact that it could have scattered anywhere made me want to keep at least a couple to react to it. But uh, anyway, and I wanted to limit the, the block plus block as well, like the, the block plus block on the guard. I wanted to do at the end. So I realised this was like kind of very one-sided in the analysis because, you know, I didn't mention really true, but I just mentioned what I was doing. But, uh, you know, I thought he did play well. Again, apart from... Apart from the first, I don't think he responded as well as he could have to the first turn, but I mean, it was a nightmare, right? It was a really, really hard turn for him. Uh, the corner kick and ball carrier stun was basically no going, coming, no coming back. So he did amazing to get the, to like he did did play great to uh, reconnect eventually as well and just stall out the half of the nil nil. He did he did do very well, but um, yeah, that's it anyway. That was that was my game and. Uh, Yep. Congrats to both of us, I guess. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.